hello boys welcome back to another session of video tutorials and this session is meant for class 11th biology students and this is meant for 13th july 2020 and we are in this session we are entering into new unit unit number 3 cell structure and functions cell structure and functions and this unit has got 15 marks for your cbsc board exam and this unit consists of three chapters chapter 1 cell the unit of life chapter 2 biomolecules and chapter 3 cell cycle and cell division out of the three for your batch biomolecules chapter is removed that means in this unit you got two chapters the present chapter that is cell the unit of life and in future in our future discussions we will have another chapter cell cycle and cell division so coming back to this chapter this chapter deals with as we said cell and its organelles cell organelles so basically there are some milestones in discovery of cell and to define of course in junior classes already you know cell is the structural and functional unit of life so this is discovered by robert hooke so you must remember robert hooke an english scientist discovered and coined the term cell while examining a thin slice of cork under self designed compound microscope so in 1672 anthony van leeuwenhoek observed bacteria sperms and rbc all of which were cells and of course in 1831 robert brown an englishman observed that all cells had a centrally positioned body which he termed as nucleus so robert brown remember nucleus and when we talk of the definition of the cell as i said just now cell is the structural and functional unit of living organisms why do you say structural when we say structural it deals with the structure means the height the weight the inner components of it what it is made up of all that what we say cell organelles and functional unit what are the functions that various cell organelles will do so overall what the cell is going to do and as you guess cells will join together make a tissue and tissues join together make an organ organs join together make organ system <coughs> and organ systems make an organism so for a living organism when we reverse back in the hierarchy it is the cell that is the fundamental unit that's why we say cell the unit of life the title of this chapter it has got uh, enclosing a bit of uh, protoplasm what do you mean by protoplasm proto means first formed plasm means liquid liquid that is formed first so basically there is a liquid and that liquid is encircled so this is what we said it's the cell and inside it you got a lot many micro as well as macro organic and inorganic molecules and they're all suspended in a colloidal fashion so the molecules are uh, busy in reactions with release and uptake of energy and the energy of course all of you know will be in the form of atp the protoplasm of the cell is limited by the membrane there is a lakshman rekha and all types of cells include three major components what are those cell membrane the outermost layer cytoplasm cyto means a cell plasm means liquid liquid that is present inside the cell cytoplasm and of course the inside the nucleus there is nucleic acids dna and rna and dna is the most important one in this so in mature plant cells in their cytoplasm you can also see large vacuoles and some non living things also so basically a cell is the structural and functional unit of a life and we must be thankful to these gentlemen sweden and swan because they proposed what is known as cell theory so 
the cell theory is jointly forward by these two gentlemen swan and sweden that's why it's called uh, sweden and swan theory what are the points that they have put forward first all organisms are composed of one or more cells so anything that is called organism must be made up of one or more cells if the organism is made up of one cell all of you know it is unicellular organism on the other hand if the organism is made up of more cells more than one cell then we say multicellular organisms like us cells are the basic living units within the organism and the chemical reactions take place within the cell and third point all cells arise from pre-existing cells by mitosis and they are not formed de novo all of a sudden from somewhere they are not formed if a cell is to be formed there must be uh, another pre-existing cell so from pre-existing cell the new cells will be formed that's why it states that cell theory states that bodies of all organisms are made up of cells and their products so that cells are units of both structure and function and then all the cells are basically alike in their chemistry and physiology and also in 1855 a german medical doctor you can see his photo rudolf virchow observed under microscope mitosis cells dividing and he reasoned that all cells come from pre-existing cells by cell division and heckel see the gentleman ernest heckel established that nucleus stores and transmits hereditary traits see the guesswork and now we know that nucleus has got dna and rna and these are the responsible things for hereditary traits so cell theory was modified accordingly and renamed as modern cell theory okay and this modern cell theory includes the follow following points cell is the fundamental unit of structure and function for all living on so no dispute in that new cells arise from pre existing cells through division that what we call now mitosis all new cells contain the same amount and degree of genetic information as contained in the parent cell that's why we say equal division and energy flow occurs within the cells and cells contain hereditary information in the form of dna which is passed on from one cell to another cell and all cells are basically the same in chemical composition in organisms and similar species this is modern theory modern cell theory and this includes also all known living things are made up of one or more cells either unicellular like amoeba paramecium euglena or multicellular like us and some organisms are made up of only one cell and are known as unicellular just on said and all life begins as a single cell others are multicellular like us a number of cells are there and the activity of an organism depends on the total activity of independent cells so cell 1 cell 2 cell 3 cell 4 all together the amount of energy that they transfer will decide the total activity of the organism depending upon specific requirement the cells are modified like elongated in muscle nerve cells loss of nucleus in rbcs cytoplasm in other skin cells so there will be some changes number size and shape of the cell and you know if they if it is a number based on number we have got uh, unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms and based on the size and shape we call them with a different names and the as you are seeing in this so basically it is the cell many cells join together and form tissues tissues will form organs organ system and finally organism so this is how the hierarchy and you can see here different shapes living organisms may be unicellular you can see here chlamydomonas unicellular e coli bacteria unicellular as chlorella casmarium and you can see the multicellular ones like hydra starfish okay cara and uh, plants etc so you got both unicellular as well as multicellular and what about the size 
Now size ranges from 0.2 micromet to 20 micrometer. And the smallest one is, you must remember, PPLO. What is this PPLO? Every time in the examination, CBS exams, NEET exam, it will be asked. It is pleuropneumonia like organisms. Okay. And mycoplasma is a responsible. And look at that. Why it is smallest? Because of this 0.1 micron. And bacteria unicellular about 10 times smaller than animal cell. E. coli, red shaped bacteria, 1 to 2 microns long. So the list goes on. Ostrich egg, biggest we say, 75 mm long. And so the cell volume will be decided by the size. And which cell type is large? Of course, you can very well guess. Look at that plant cell occupying maximum space. Then animal cell is smaller compared to that. And bacterial cell is still smaller. So generally plant cells are larger than others. And look at the table. Here you can see. Uh, 0.1 nanometers nm in nanometer and look at the blue whale it's almost 10 meters and the typical cell range is 50 to, uh, 5 to 50 microns in diameter look at please go through this table and then why are cells so small in order to survive cells must constantly interact with their surrounding environment and can grow only to certain size so here, if the cell grows beyond certain limit, enough material will not be able to cross the membrane to accommodate with increased cell. If the cell size increases, the required material should be there and that material cannot pass through it. That is the reason why it has to be, cells have to be small and shape, there is a great variety in cell shape. Some are spherical, some are polygonal, disc-like, cuboidal column or spindle like this so generally cells are spherical but in multicellular forms due to pressure become polyhedral uh, plants of course variety hexagonal polygonal like that and cells change shape like in amoeba amoeba keeps on changing its shape leukocytes like that so cell shapes also will decide and look at the various sh shapes look at the amoeba shapeless okay and narrow cell neuron the longest one muscle cell shape you see cylindrical epithelial cells pillar like red blood cells spherical so you can see varieties of shapes of cells here and the types of cells the past there are two types prokaryotic pro means primitive or first formed carrion means nucleus so first formed nucleus or primitive nucleus. Nucleus is not very clear. So we can say prokaryotic cell is a cell in which nucleus is not very clear. It may be there, but it's not clear. Then nuclear material may be there. In eukaryotic cell, on the other hand, U means clear, true. Carrion means nucleus. So in eukaryotic cell is a cell in which nucleus is very clear. So there are two types of cells broadly based on whether the nucleus is clear or not. And there is a proposed one, mesokaryotic, which can be placed in between. Okay, that is the one. And prokaryotic cells, normally the bacterial cells. Look at that. So cell structure and the nucleus is not very clear, but you can see here nucleide. And that nucleide having DNA, bacterial DNA will be there. So the cells of bacteria like arch, arch bacteria, blue green algae, mycoplasma, rickets are included in this type. So what is the important uh, way to recognize uh, a prokaryotic cell? These are the, there are no membrane bound cell organelles. Infolding of plasma membrane, mesosomes will be there. And of course, nucleus is not very clear. Nucleoid will be there. And on the other hand, eukaryotic, it's very clear. You just now said clear. So the genetic material is clear. Nucleus is very clear. Uh, cell organelles will be having membranes. So membrane bound cell organelles. And lot many or whatever list is there. All this will be present in eukaryotic cell. 
and mesokaryotic in some organisms like dinoflagellates genetic material is surrounded by nuclear membrane that's eukaryotic character but histone protein is not associated with the dna that's why we are saying in between so the nucleus is larger in size and has been named as mesokaryon okay and so there are three types now other cell types mycoplasma ppl go just now i said in examinations it's important expand the abbreviation so pleuro pneumonia like organism so the size of the cell may not be more than 1000 to 5000 times that of yes so it is sent placed ppl goes with bacteria in the group mycoplasmata but we will study other way so this is how the smallest organism pplo will be there look at that and i want you to focus on this dna and rna and how do we differentiate prokaryotic cell eukaryotic cell go through the table cell components no compartments distinct cell wall present absent in animal cell present in plant cell plasma membrane present lipid layer and uh, you got proteins plus lipids cell organelles absent here present respiratory system mesosomes mitochondria will be there well developed mitochondria capsule present composed of uh, polysaccharides here absent capsule is absent photosynthetic pigments chlorophyll will be present keratin will be there here lamella system you got uh, what is called plastids well developed plastids nucleus is not distinct as we have been nucleus is distinct so go through this just copy this table write your points write your observations draw one prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell and in our next session we will talk about further the cell organelles until then take